In trying to find the essence of C.J. Dennis, and even the source of inspiration for his characters, John Derham has embarked on a remarkable piece of detective work. It's a search that's taken him to the place Dennis loved best, and where he lived for his most productive period, a little mountain hamlet just outside Melbourne called Talangi. To linger in Talangi when the winds of winter blow is to get an aftertaste of what old Noah used to know. And to loiter in Talangi when the sons of summer bake is to suffer from a plethora of bullock whip and snake. But your heart is full of gladness and it makes the spirits sing just to linger in Talangi, in Talangi in the spring. Dan came here when he was about 32 and lingered for another 30 years. John Derham's quest has led him into a quaint world of old people who are still under the spell of Dennis. Oh, hi, John. Come in. And he gladly accepts pieces of information, no matter how small. Cuttings, photographs, and a little gossip. In, in those days, uh, we didn't have a very large guest house. When this Talangi class photograph was taken in 1911, Gurley Smedley was an impressionable young schoolgirl. And she remembers that Dennis had a bit of a crush on her teacher. Yes, yes, he used to be a little bit sweet on Miss Mitchell. There, and he used to bring his manuscripts down sometimes and uh, I said, yeah, I said, bring him down. I said, oh, you know, to get her to punctuate. And I think he was more educated probably than what the Miss Mitchell was. <laughs> he didn't need any punctuation. I think it was just the way of getting uh, a little bit more attention probably. <laughs> The little pieces of the jigsaw are slot together, and Miss Chivers, the housemaid, recalls that the writer did fancy a drop. One of the times when he did go on a bit of a bender was, oh, well, when, that was, was that? when Mrs. Dennis went to Melbourne for a week. He'd go on the bender <laughs> and then they had to. Uh, when he was off I, the leash. Yes, I was have to ring the doctor at the hospital and get him to oh, come up oh, and, and take him down to the hospital and for a week and they'd dry him out. <laughs> Friends, relatives, acquaintances, and people who simply enjoyed Dennis's works lead John to the author's old haunts, like the Sunnyside artist colony where he used to live. Bob Kroll, whose father was one of Dennis's mates, remembers when most of the Sunnyside mob were living in old trams. Uh, over here, and the taller fruit was over here, particularly plum trees, and then the Hall of Hell and the Den of Den, the two old... Um, uh, horse trams uh, that they occupied were, were just about there near that blackwood tree. The conversion to a bungalow was quite good, except for the varnish. Uh, the, the summer heat made the varnish alligator, and I can smell the smell of that hot varnish to this day. <laughs> it's believed that Ruby Barrett, wife of a Victorian berry farmer, was part of the inspiration for the original Doreen. And although John Derham finally tracks her down, Ruby, now 86, can add only a few more clues to his personality. Quiet little man with a great sense of humour. Really? He really yes. did have. And he just, it, it, like, he'd be around all the time? Practically. Yes. Mm, yeah. So he, he lived there on the, the Roberts property. Yeah. In the in the bus, the converted bus at the back. Yes, did, he but... practically lived there. He was not a bad little cook, you know. He used to make very nice egg dishes, you know. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll do anything to make it right. How can you expect me to trust you now? Whoever the original Doreen was based upon, in the talkie version of the film, the part was played by Ray Fisher, one of our screen darlings of the 1930s. Goodbye. Doreen? Oh, kid, kid, you nearly broke my heart. Doreen? Oh, hell. In real life, Ray Fisher actually married the champion jockey, Billy Cook. But she still remembers well those days when she was courted on screen by the sentimental bloke. She was written as in the bloke's eyes, the sweetest peach in the barrow. Yeah. Uh, 
She was in that era, very nice girl, very proper girl, uh, but warm in character. And, and probably uh, for a rough bloke, aiming a bit high? Yes, I think he was aiming a bit high. Or she may have thought she was not in his, uh, you know, in his yeah. class, probably. Yeah. And she, he, she, he was, a, I think, as C.J. Dennis put it, he wanted to show the, uh, the bloke, a larrikin bloke, with dreams and wishes and ideas of a home and the girl that he dreamed about. And Doreen was that girl. Ah, but I could see you, couldn't I? Just for a minute. Well, perhaps. Just one.